Women's Ooh. basketball tip-off. I'm happy to welcome the Louisville Cardinals to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Head you. coach Jeff Walls, along with freshman McKinley Randolph, and then veteran Olivia Cochran. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, first question I got for you is, you got a freshman up here on this stage. Is it just because of the cute face, or what is she doing up here? Hey, dude. Well, <laughs> you know. She made me. She made no, me. We're, you know, we sit there, we sat there as a staff, and we just discussed ACC Media Day. And I told him, I said, you know, Olivia, obviously fifth year, she started every, every game since she's been here. She decided to, to come back for that fifth year. And then as we've gone through our practice, uh, you know, one of our most consistent players we've had so far, and, and not just making shots, but being vocal, being a leader, being positive, uh, just how she handles herself. And I thought she's, I've been very, very impressed with it. And I was like, okay, you know, come on, you're coming. Here just, you. just try not to embarrass your family. Sorry, McKinley, you know? it's not the cute face. face. Come on. <laughs> it is the face, too. All right, Jeff, obviously, you have been the beacon of success in the ACC, one of the most consistent teams in the country. Why is that? I mean, it is hard to win. And your sustained level of excellence is something that I know most people just yearn to achieve. Well, you know, I first start off with, with players. I mean, you can be what people might say a really good coach, but if you, if you don't have good players, it's not going to matter. And then staff. Uh, you know, I'll tell you real quick, because it's one of these things in our job, Today was, is donuts with dad day at school for my daughters. They're nine and 11. And when I told them the news, hey, I'm not gonna be able to make it. You know, they both asked, they're like, can Lamont come? So Lamont works for me. He's my, my video man, takes care of everything. And you know, I was like, I'll ask him. And so Lamont filled in for me because it's what we do, we're a family. And I've got one of the best staffs, if not the best, in the country. Steph Norman's been with me for 18 years. Adrian Johnson works player development and helps with the players in the community. Been there for 19. And when, when you get a group of people together that work well together, then all of a sudden our players are able to see. It's not a show. It's like, OK, they care about each other. They're expecting excellence from us because they expect it from each other. So I think that's how we've done it. And I've been very fortunate. It, the University of Louisville supports women's sports, not just women's basketball, women's sports. Look what Danny's doing with our volleyball program. It's, and, and it can go down the line, Arthur with swimming. I mean, when you've got a university, athletic director, administration that says, hey, we value women, it's amazing what can happen. And we've been blessed here at Louisville for my 18 years to have had that. And that doesn't happen every place. All right, let's talk this team this season. You lost some, you're bringing some great ones in. What should we expect as far as what we're going to see on the floor? Well, on Monday it's this, and on Tuesday <laughs> it's this. Uh, we're, we're trying to get the consistency. The one thing I will say, and, and I say it in a, in a positive way, the old saying, ignorance is bliss. You know, I got freshmen out there that are just playing as hard as they can, and it's, it's fantastic. Are we always doing the right thing? No, but they're doing it hard. And that's one thing that we talk about and I always talk about. We can teach you and try to show you what to do, but when we've got to teach effort and coach effort, it's not going to happen. So I think what you're going to see with this group is we've got a group of very talented freshmen who are going to learn in a hurry because they're going to be thrown into the fire. And then when you've got Olivia, Marissa Russell, Jada Curry, uh, Julia, you, we, we've got some experience. I mean, everybody talks about O oh, and her Elite Eights and Final Fours. J Julia is the same way from Miami. She had that opportunity to play in, in, in an Elite Eight. So she's got that big game experience. So we've got some veterans who are able to work with our freshmen to tell them, hey, here's what's coming. Because I keep trying to tell them, it's not high school anymore. Like, you know, you, that one play you take off is when you get scored on, and that's the one on national TV that all your <laughs> friends are going, man, you, you, you got cooked. So we're, <laughs> we're preparing for it. First off, uh, just um, TJ Wilkerson from the Sports Nerd Podcast. My question goes to McKinley. McKinley, I mean, you're used to the lights and the flashes coming out of Sierra Cannon High. 
But I wanted to ask what it's been like to get into the speed of the college game, especially because, for one, Coach Waltz likes to play fast. He's all about speed. Also, number two, my question for you is, what separates you and your game from your father's game? Mm. Um, I would say, you know, coming from Sierra and into college, the first couple weeks were hard. Definitely just learning the pace, learning the difference um, from college and high school. But as I practiced and, you know, I kept working on my craft and at my game with the coaches and with my teammates, you know, I started to adapt and I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with the ball and just with the speed of the game because, you know, Jeff Scott is playing really fast. So I'm definitely adapting now that we got, I got a couple months under my belt. And I would say the difference from me and my, my dad's game, you know, there's a lot of similarities that everybody says. I play just like my dad, but I'm starting to learn how to shoot over the basket, not through, <laughs> and uh, just stretching my game out, out to the three and being able to create off the dribble. Oh, this question is for ladies, uh, Royal Howell, the Juice Network. Ladies, how has Coach been able to get you all to buy into his culture, to his identity at Louisville? And when he coaches you all hard, what does that do for you for a mental aspect on the court, knowing that he wants the best for you in the long term? For me, um, just playing for Coach Wall for five years, um, he definitely has helped me with having a stronger mental um, health. Like he, he makes our mental good. Um, he he asks us how did how does he want like how did he wants to um, coach us? Like he asks us that, and that's kind of new for me because the coach never asks asks me how to like how do you want me to coach you. Um, and I'm like, get on me, coach. Um, I need you to push me the hardest um, for me because I, I get complacent with myself and um, and not. But I'm the type of player that I need somebody to be on me, um, tell me what I'm doing wrong, or tell me if I'm not going hard. And Coach Walls is like all day and above, and he's gonna give you a hug after. Um, and I think that's what they're gonna enjoy mm -hmm. from him. Yeah, I can agree too. And. Just like being recruited by Walls and just like being around him, I know his legacy and I know like he's telling me the right things to do. So it's like, why not listen and learn? Definitely. Run through a wall. Oh, yeah. Okay, coach. Hopefully he's swimming in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, hey, Jeff. Uh, Brooks Holden uh, with the Courier Journal in Louisville. Um, I was going to ask about Jada Curry. She spent some time this summer uh, training in France. Um, just um, have you seen any differences um, in her game since she's come back uh, from that trip? And then... You know, um, what do you need from her, at, you know, this year? I'm heading into her senior season. Yeah, Jada, she, she's one that, you know, I've talked to for a year and a half now, you know, of, of trying to get her. She puts in as much work in the gym as anybody that I've been around. For Jada, it's coming with the confidence. Her knowing, why are you going to put all this work into it if you're not then going to have the confidence to show it on the basketball court? Uh, she, she shoots the ball extremely well. I, I need her to play with that confidence. I, you know, I tell her all the time, she gets so upset when she misses a shot. And it's what I try to tell all, all of my players. I, you know, I, I've recruited them all, and, and every time I've went and watched them play, they've missed a shot. So it's okay. You know, it's how she handles it after she misses one. And if she can, and she's gotten better, her training in Paris, in France, they really worked on the mental aspect of the game, being able to overcome, not letting one mistake turn into two, leaving it behind, and then still being uh, aggressive. Those are the things that we're looking for from Jada. I need her to look to attack. It doesn't mean you shoot it every time, but if you can draw two defenders, get it to the, per the person that's open. But I don't want her to be passive. And I thought that's how she was last year a lot. And then talking to her about learning to be aggressive when the game's on the line. You know, I, I always talk about players, and Cindy knows, it's like, okay, you might score 10 when we're down 25. I, that doesn't do me any good. Right. So we lose by 15 instead of 30. It, who cares? You know, I want that aggress aggressiveness when it's a two-point game. Are you still willing to take that shot when we've gone three minutes without scoring, we've defended, but now we've got to make one? Those are the things I'm talking to, to Jade about because she's extremely talented. And that's what I think is going to make our team so exciting is it doesn't, it's not going to matter who starts for us because whoever is on the floor is talented and has the ability to impact the game. Coach, obviously 
we're missing out on um, Alexis Mobley and Kiki Jefferson, but you've also got players that are really stepping up, like Olivia, Jada Curry. How much do you expect for them to take over if went for those girls that have left? Well, you know, it's, it happens every year. You know, you've got your graduation. I mean, I go back to Angel McCautry. How are you going to replace Angel McCautry? You're not. You just, who's the next one? You know, it was Shoney Schimmel, uh, Bria Smith, kids that it's like, okay, how are you replacing them? You're not. Then here comes Maichi, here comes Dana. I mean, we've been fortunate enough here at Louisville to be able to get players that buy in to what we're trying to do. We're not always the flashiest. We're not always, you know, in the front of every, pu uh, every publication. But somehow, we've done a pretty good job of figuring out how to be there right. when it comes March. Now, la last year, we, we laid an egg. I'll, I'll be the first to admit. A lot of programs might be excited to make the tournament. That, 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 that's not the expectations here. You know, so it didn't go as we had hoped. And we're working to, to, to change that. So for us, it's, it's the next one. I don't worry about last year's group. Now, I love them. They're great kids. We had a great time. We had a lot of good times. But now I focus on this year, who are the players that are going to make an impact? And for us, we might not have Dana Evans, Asia Durr. But we've got a collection of really good talent. If they work together, we could have five different leading scorers in five games. I really believe that. Uh, this question is for everyone on stage, uh, coaches and players. Uh, last year with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, it seems like women's basketball who? just. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not who? <laughs> what? 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 No, I'm cheesing. Go ahead. <laughs> kind of scared me for a second. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the serious baseball. <laughs> did Did they play basketball? Were they the softball? Which, okay, go ahead. Got you, man. All right. All right. <laughs> with the emergence of women's college basketball last year, you can make an argument that the women's tournament was bigger than the men's tournament. And just them going to the WNBA and just that buzz around women's college basketball in general, what can be done to keep that buzz going, to keep that fire going? We're going to, I, and, and I appreciate that question because I, I do. It, it's amazing what's taken place, okay? But I'm going to go back, and I've said it on record. My Moore's the best player I've ever coached against, that I've ever watched play in person. That's just, and I'm not, a, not Angel McCautry is the best player I've ever coached, okay? The difference is back in 08, 09, 2010, when they did something spectacular in a game, it wasn't able to be seen on a national stage in five seconds. You hoped that ESPN might put it on like one of the top 10 plays. And back then, that really didn't happen very often. So a lot of people, unless you went to the games, didn't get the opportunity to see how talented and how good these young ladies are. Caitlin, Angel, uh, great players. We, we, we've got so many great players now. I don't think it's going to go backwards because we're able to showcase what we have. Now, what I'm hoping in our game that I think we have to get better at, and I've been fighting this, we will come into a season with a narrative that we want to show. And then we stick with it. And you could have a kid who nobody even knew about starts dropping 25 and 30, and we don't change our narrative. See, that's where we miss out, in my opinion. Like, it's great to have, hey, here, here's who I think is going to be really good. But then when somebody else comes along, we need to do a better job of going, hey, we got to go showcase this young lady as well, because right. now we're able to go, listen, instead of being 10, God, there's 20, because that's what's taking place in our game. Now there's so many more players playing at a high level that it's not easy to go, here's our preseason All-American list. Well, that preseason list might not even come close to who is your postseason All-American. So for our game to continue to grow, I think we've got to do a better job of making sure we're willing to showcase those ones that we didn't anticipate to be great. Because they're out there, and it's fun to watch. But overall, I, I, the media's done so much of a better job 
showcase and promoting our sport and social media, we're able to get things out instantly. And as part of that, many, it's easy when we have young ladies and coaches like you who represent our game. So Louisville, thank you very much, and good luck this season. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Go you. Cards. <laughs>